This video is for DeFi developers who want to listen to every single swap on Uniswap V2, Uniswap V3, and SushiSwap. With that, you'll get the swap price and the address doing the swap live when each swap occurs. Stick around and I'll give you some super helpful tips to stop you from pulling your hair out from confusion while you're doing this. Let's walk through some code. We start by importing Ethers.js because that's how we'll be interacting with the blockchain here. Next, we import the artifact for Uniswap v3 because we'll need it to monitor the swap events on v3 pools. And we do the same thing and import the artifact for the Uniswap v2 pair. And a pair is like the v2 equivalent of a v3 pool. For Sushi, we will also use the V2 pair artifact because when Sushi Swap was created, they just copied uh, Uniswap V2's pool contract, so it's the same. And this is the easy way to get these artifacts, which is getting them from the libraries, the NPM packages. So you'll need uh, Uniswap V3 core and then Uniswap V2 periphery. Now we'll pick the pool that we want to monitor swaps on for Uniswap V3. And I recommend this web app here at info.uniswap.org where you can see all the pools and you can also search them by token. So I'm going to be monitoring the 0.05% USDC ETH pool on Uniswap v3. Then we'll pick a pool to monitor on Uniswap v2. And I used to recommend this site v2.info.uniswap.org, but it seems to be down for the last couple days. So the other way that you can get a pair address is to use the factory contract on Uniswap v2, and if you have the addresses of the two tokens in the pair, then you can look up the pair. And forgive me if I call a pair a pool and a pool a pair. And for SushiSwap, as far as I know, there's no equivalent site like there is for v2 and v3. If you wanted to build one as part of a portfolio to get a job in DeFi, that would be an amazing project. But in the meantime, you'll just need to use the SushiSwap factory to look up a pair address. And I cover that in another video. But either way, it's very simple. Just a little bit of code. So I'm actually using USDC on Uniswap V3. And I'm using USDT. Well, we're monitoring events on USDT for V2 and Sushi. Why am I doing USDC for V3 and, U and USDT for V2 and Sushi? I don't know. I need to drink more coffee. If you want to buy me a coffee, I will happily provide my MetaMask address. And I'm going to give you some functions here that convert the values outputted from the swap events into a human readable price, like what you would see if you used the Uniswap V3 or V2 or SushiSwap UI. This function here is for V3. And super quick, this unsquares the value and then shifts the decimal place. And we use this for V3 because it stores its prices in a crazy square root x96 format. So it takes a little bit of work to convert that into a human readable value. Importantly, I've hard coded this to work specifically for this pair where USDC has six decimal places and wrapped ether has 18 decimals and six minus 18 is negative 12. That's why we have a negative 12 in here. And if you used a different pool with different tokens, then you would be shifting the decimal place by a different amount. These two functions are for Uniswap V2 and SushiSwap. V2 events are a little funny, so we need, depending on the direction of the swap, we need to use different values that come out of the event. Um, that's why I have two functions here. We could do this a little more elegantly probably and combine it into one function, but I've already written two functions, so we're just going to use these. Again, the 12 in here is reference to the difference in the number of decimals between the two tokens, except I believe for USDT and ETH on V2, um, they're in the opposite direction as USDC and ETH on V3. What I'm saying is that on V3, the pool is USDC over ETH, where, where on V2, uh, I believe the pair is ETH over USDT. Then we create a provider here to connect to the blockchain, and I'm using Infura. And this isn't my real key, by the way, ABC. 
That would be a really bad key. You just, you, we need to keep our keys private, so you'll need to use your own, which you can get by signing up for Infura or another node provider. Now we initialize the pool contract for V3 because that's the contract whose events we'll be monitoring. And then we initialize the pair contracts on V2 and on Sushi. Now let's look at the code that actually listens for events on Uniswap V3. So we reference the, um, the pool contract and we do dot on. We pass in the name of the event. Um, some contracts may only have one event. Other contracts may have a lot of different events. So you specify the event and then you specify what you're listening for. This is something important, so listen up. The names you provide here do not matter, but the order matters. You can name these whatever you want. If you put the square root price x96 first, and you put sender last, then your sender is going to have the value of the square root price x96, and your square root price x96 is going to have the value of sender. So it's very important to keep the order in mind here. One more thing that's very important is that if an error is thrown inside this dot on, it's going to fail silently and nothing's going to log. And you might mistake this as nothing actually happening on the network. So be very careful here. So we pass the square root price x96 to our square root to price function that we walked through above. And before that, we convert it to a string because it comes back as a big number a JavaScript big number because I'm using Ether 6. And then we'll log that this is V3. We'll log the pair, we'll log the sender, and then we will log the price. We use the words price and ratio interchangeably when talking about Uniswap because the price really is the ratio between the two tokens. And I'm doing one over ratio here to invert the value because the pool is USDC over ETH, but I would rather look at it as ETH over USDC because I think it's easier to think about the number 1800 changing than it is to think about the number 0 0.00055. Now we listen for swap events on V2 and what we're listening for is not the same. You'll notice strangely that there are four different amounts, amount zero in, amount one in, amount zero out, and amount one out. Why are there four different amounts? Firstly, it's to confuse you. No, I'm joking. Um, kind of joking. There's different amounts because different amounts are used depending on the direction of the swap. So for a USDC to ETH swap or a USDT to ETH swap, you should look at amount zero in and amount one out. And for an ETH to USDT swap, you should look at amount one in and amount zero out. Then we will log that it's uh, Uniswap V2. We'll log the pair. We'll log the sender, and then we'll log um, both ratios. So one of these is going to be null, and the other one's going to have a value. Just ignore the one that's null. Or write a function that combines them and spits out the one that's not null. And finally, we have sushi. And everything that applies to a V2 applies to sushi because they're the same contract. So we log the same stuff. Now let's open our terminal and run this. I've been running this for a while and it's really interesting to watch this. We can see the price differences across platforms. We have the price of a swap on V3. We have the price of a swap on V2. And we have the price of a swap on Sushi. And I could watch this all day, but leave your questions and tutorial requests in the comments. Give this a like and subscribe if you're still watching and I'll see you next time.